Hi everyone, my name is Valeria Nikolenko from Calibra Facebook and I decided to give you a glimpse into what kind of research problems we are looking at uh, because it's quite a nice crypto uh, group is forming up there. So I decided to um, br very briefly describe you one of the projects we're working on. It's the project called Winkle, it protects uh, blockchains from forks of history and this is joint work with uh, PhD candidate Sara Azuvi. She is also an intern at Calibra and George Danezis. Uh, sorry. So we are mainly concerned with proof of uh, stake blockchains, and this is uh, the chain of blocks that originates from Tangenesis block. And if we zoom into one of the blocks, um, we can see that there is a parent hash that chains the block with the previous one. There is an ordered list of transactions, and there is a signature by validators that validates this block, that makes this block valid. So the validators are the ones who run consensus protocol between each other. And they're trying to consent to the next block. And if they agree on the next block, they supply a joint signature on that block. And this makes the block valid. And usually, in place, there are some incentive mechanisms to keep validators honest during uh, the consensus protocol. So in particular, sometimes they uh, lock the money to become validators. And if they behave honestly, they get their money back plus some reward. If they misbehave or deviate from the protocol, they don't get their money back. So they have strong incentives to stay honest during the execution, but the problem is once they got their money back, they have no more incentives to keep their old keys secure. And so in this project, we're asking us ourselves the questions, what if I they just lose their old keys? What can happen? What basically this is also known as nothing at stake attack in the blockchain community. And the devastating thing will happen, basically, the adversary who got old keys of the validators will be able to create a fork of the, of the history of the blockchain. And proof of um, stake blockchains are particularly susceptible to this kind of attacks if they don't deploy some proof of work or some delay functions. Basically, forking comes for free because you can very quickly produce as many signatures as you want on the adversarial chain and create a very long fork. And also, the poor user has now way, no way of differentiating between a true chain and an adversarial chain. So what do we do? And basically, what the adversary can do with this, his fork, he can censor the network, he can replay transactions that he likes, and he can drop transactions that he doesn't like. So the solution comes from kind of a bird eye view of the problem. So all blockchain users, they're typically a very large set. They're like a, an order of a million or a billion, a lot of them. But the value later set is very small, it's of the order of a hundred or a thousand. And the reason for that is because consensus is very expensive. They need in particular like pairwise channels between each other. So when you start growing the value data set um, over a thousand, this becomes challenging, consensus becomes slow, new blocks um, appear infrequently, so you don't want that. You want the set to be small. But the problem now is for the attacker, it makes it easier for him to attack some substantial set of validators versus some substantial set of users, which makes uh, this blockchain kind of vulnerable. And so here's an idea, why don't we put power in the hands of the users and why don't we allow the users to also vote on the chain? So we propose augmenting transactions with basically the block. So the transaction will be the sender, the receiver amount, and the block. Because typically users have some idea of what the tip of the blockchain is, or they have some trusted party that, will t that they trust that will tell them what's the tip of the chain. So we keep track of these votes, and once we collect two-thirds of votes weighted by the amounts under their accounts, we consider the block checkpointed. And then, um, basically, we are proving a theorem that an, an adversary cannot checkpoint a new block in the fork. And that gives a way for the, to differentiate between a true chain and an adversarial chain, because the true chain will have more recent checkpoints. Now, what makes this theorem challenging is that the state changes hands, and so the voting power kind of shifts around. So basically, what we are doing is we are writing two proof of stake proposing of running two proof-of-stake algorithms on top of each other, proof-of-stake by users on top of proof-of-stake by validators. Um, interesting point also about the kind of uh, assumptions here. So uh, the, typically in Byzantine full torrent um, protocols, there is a gap between the number of people who need to vote and the number of Byzantine nodes that we can tolerate. There's one third gap. But here, basically, we're kind of in a synchronous setting because we can wait forever uh, for the users to checkpoint new blocks. So these assumptions can be relaxed, and sorry, there is a type where it can be bring to like one half and one half plus epsilon if we believe only epsilon uh, fraction of users can be eclipsed from the network. So this 
high-level idea can benefit not just blockchains that I described, but uh, potentially uh, other blockchain projects as well. Uh, it's also independent of the type of consensus algorithm that you run. Uh, both security consensus guarantees liveness uh, and it guarantees short-term security, while this kind of protocol empowers users um, to participate in the gover long-term governing of the blockchain. Thank you.